Yes, and we all are for a wonderful treat. I'm so excited, delighted, and very honored to present Silvia Monge from Costa Rica, an absolutely wonderful artist, a wonderful woman, and, and also a great personal friend to me. So I'm, I'm really very delighted to introduce her. Sylvia is a very versatile artist. I love her work and her colors, the energy that she puts into her paintings. She does glass, ceramics, and much more. She's a very busy professional artist and an ambassador for Daniel Smith. So with nothing more to say, Sylvie, it's wonderful <laughs> to have you. Thank you very much. And please have the words. Thank you very much, Estella. It's We Will Meet John, but I'm so glad that you are the host today and you are a very good friend of mine and I love your work also. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a, I really enjoy these sessions because it's a time to share with many watercolor artists around the world and also to learn from many artists. So thank you so much for the invitation. Hey. Well, we are very honored to have you, Sylvie. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. And of course, yeah. we want to say thank you to Stella for helping us with today's session. Always ready. <laughs> um, we're going to do you. just a quick sharing of uh, some of Sylvia's recent artworks. And again, we don't want our audience here to miss uh, connecting with Sylvia. So we're going to just introduce her socials handles. So we do a share screen. And then after that, Sylvia will take the time for sharing. Okay. Do follow Sylvia on Instagram. She's sylvia.monghe. Oh, I think I, I said it right this time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can't say the, the next word, though. How do you say this? It's, it, 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 pooch. You pooch. pronounce it pooch. Okay. Pooch. Mm -hmm. My mother is from Barcelona, so it's a Catalonian last name. Okay. Thank you, Sylvia. And this is also Sylvia's Facebook account. And the next couple of slides are Sylvia's artworks, which if in case you did not notice, these artworks here are the artworks on her wall. So <laughs> Sylvia would like would love to I, for each. Yes, I I have been working this last month in in transparencies uh, and with the negative shapes. Uh, and that that's one of the paintings that I have done, trying to, to look not only the, the last layer of watercolor, but I want to look that, that you can look more. What's, 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 since the first layer, what can you see more the soul of the watercolor? Okay, well, this, this is <laughs> it's different. It's, my mother plays very nice the piano and, and she always wanted us to learn how to play piano. I had to take classes, piano lessons for many years, but I was very bad at it. So I decided that I was going to paint the music. That's why I put this stuff. <laughs> you say stuff? Stuff, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the way that I, I was trying to paint the music. I like this, this subject. So I have done several paintings of the music. Beautiful. This is again with the transparencies of the watercolor and the different layers. I have been working all year round doing uh, glass leaves. So I guess I was here painting the leaves also. This is, I, I enjoy a lot walk, walking in the parks and just feeling the trees and how they, I feel like the, all nature communicates with each other. Uh, so this is one of the paintings that I did from the park. Mm -hmm. 
this again was uh, about the transparencies and the the negative shapes and playing a little bit with that. Okay, this this is the one that is in in uh, Fabiano in Vietnam right now, and I'm very happy because I got with this an uh, award. Uh, uh, I don't remember the name of the award, but well, Jan also got one, so maybe he know he remembers. <laughs> excellent award, excellent award. Excellent, right? It's excellent. <laughs> It's the last image artwork on share. Sylvie is very humble to say how many awards she gets around the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it, it's nice to get an award because it makes you work harder. Yes, it's very inspiring. Inspiring, right. Yes, that's the word. And today I thought that I was going to, one of the subjects that I enjoy a lot is, are the roosters. So today I thought I was going to do some roosters. I have several prepared to, uh, to paint them in different ways. So, because I think it's good to, to share the, the different ways that you can do that. Okay, I will go today. Bye bye. Okay, let me see. Um, do I need to turn on this? Do I need to turn on this the 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 sound here, or you can hear? I don't need. You're you're good, okay, Sylvia. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. I was just about to say that for our friends in Facebook, we have our uh, artist, our friend, Anna Marie, uh, BA Anna Marie there, uh, who's going to help us with questions. So you feel free to type in your questions and Anna Marie will help read out your questions for Sylvia. And similarly okay. in Zoom, we're going to help Sylvia with the questions because she, as we can see, she's far there. So we will yeah. help with the questions. I think Anna Marie, if, if you can help us out, and Gabriel also, since Gabriel is with us. Thank okay, you. great. I I already uh, draw some of the lines where I'm going to to start with the rooster. I just do a few lines. I will okay. use the quinacridone bolt that I re is one of my favorite colors, and the ultramarine blue, uh, pale blue, and maybe I will use the, the lunar black also. Very, very yes. uh, often yes. still yes. will paint uh, roosters <laughs> and let anybody have a stroke there when she has an auditorium and she's uh, doing a demo. <laughs> very exciting thing to do. <laughs> I will use this. This is my old brush that paints, you know, not only in one direction, because but everywhere. I don't know. <laughs> I usually I usually mix the colors on the brush and not on the palette. Feel free if you want to ask me any question. Do you choose your color based on emotion or on theory, or do you have the colors decided before you start? 
How do you choose your colors? No, not really. Well, I, I have some of the colors that I wanted to use, but I don't know where, where am I going to put them until I start. This is one of my favorite tools. I don't know if you use them, if you use it. Fancy brush. Sylvie, did you wet the paper before or are you painting wet and dry? No, no, I uh, wet and dry. Yes, I don't, I didn't wet it. I don't wet it usually. The paper. And it looks like the, the paper is very slick. Are you using hot press? Yes, I like it. I like hot press. Sometimes I use a cold press, but my favorite is hot press. Yeah, I see how the, the paint flows and sits on the top of the paper. Yes, and, and, and you know, with the, with the cold press, the color changes a lot. Yeah, it does. When it dries, with the... With the cold press, the, the color changes when it dries. With the hot press, it doesn't change that much. Because all the pigments sit on the top. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, are you going to use red, of course? <laughs> <laughs> This the uh, how do you say pyrrole or pyro? How do you pyro. say pyro? I I think. Don't ask me about pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the pyros, the orange and the pyro red. Both of them. I are know. I found I found out about this color when I took the workshop with Alvaro Castanet. Yeah, he and, uses he uses red and orange, both of them, yeah, he does. And since then I have been using. Mm. Okay. This is my first rooster. I usually do the eye until it's dry. The rooster with attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me. Bueno, pero sin que se mueva porque tiene mucha agua. Recto, recto. I will do Is it another one. Is it a half sheet, Tilly? Hmm? It's a half sheet. I need what? Half. It's a half sheet, half of the royal. Oh, sheet. yes, they are half sheet, yes. Okay. On Facebook, okay. we have uh, Kimberly. She says she loves the colors. <laughs> Let me see. How do you, is it okay like this? 
It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay. Okay, with this one, I want to use this, this, this fancy, this uh, brush. I like a lot to, to draw, so with this, I, I am able to draw. I, I also like a black and white. I love seeing you hold the back of the brush. <laughs> yes. I love the spontaneity with which Sylvie, Sylvie paints. I also like this brush too, this one. With long hair, yes. Because it gives you a stronger or thicker lines. This rooster looks like it's running. It doesn't want to be dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what you were asking before. Yes, uh, before we came on live, uh, I was expressing how in the past you made uh, other animals uh, look like they're moving. And I think you do that well. A lot of energy in her paintings. <laughs> I also use this, and maybe you will like this kind of bottles. Sylvia, was that instrument considered a pen or a soft brush? It had a point on it. The, the, the last one that I showed you? Yes. yes. It's called uh, applicator. Thank you. And what I do is... How is... No, it's not like what I do is I put in this uh, some uh, watercolor and then water and just mix it. Very good. You should try it because it's very nice. That chicken saw, he'd probably run. <laughs> Sylvie, that reminds me of a book of Nicolaides, The Natural Way of of, to draw. I don't know if anybody knows the old guys. We all know that book. Wonderful book, The Natural Way to Draw. That your drawing reminds me of that book. Really? I, I don't know. I don't know it. Yeah. It, it, I don't know if many people know that book. I know the roosters, they don't have, I don't know how to call this part on the head. <laughs> I don't know if it's, I know it's not so big, but I like it to do it like that. I think it's a cone. <laughs> He's running. The uh... crest. I, 
I think the technical term is a uh, red thingy. <laughs> I usually do the eye when, when it's dry. You will run off the paper. <laughs> yes. I thought I thought in the composition not to take the whole paper because because it's like running. So I want it here to be white. And this part, it's like out of the paper. Beautiful shape. Sylvie, someone is saying such freedom of expression, and that is very much about Sylvie's painting. She is very exp expressive and, and very free in that and very spontaneous. That is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful thing. I think that's one of the things that I like about watercolor. Yep. That you can be... It, very spontaneous. In, in, I don't like to 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 wait to 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 be for a long time waiting for the painting to dry for the next step. <laughs> I think I'm not patient. With a towel paper, I will dry a little bit because I don't want it to be so wet. I don't want it to be so wet. On face, someone mentioned cock a doodle doo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It seems that you've also inspired Kimberly. She's saying, I'll be scribbling with my watercolors all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Every time that, every Friday that we have the opportunity to, to see other artists painting, how they, you know, to learn a lot from, from each other. It, that's very nice because when you, when you stay home, then you want to do, to try different things, to do things that you learn. Okay. That's I think funny. this this is a great opportunity to learn from many artists. Wow, on to our third. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be a record for productivity during the yeah. demonstrations. <laughs> I think yeah, you let's see. Me, How you many roosters me. can you paint in an hour? <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should ask me more questions because I don't have any more paper prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make compositional decisions before you start painting? Uh, yes, I, I did some of the drawings before, so I was ready for that. But with the colors and many of the things, uh, when I start, I start doing making decisions of what I'm going to do. Sylvia, some of your work is uh, textured, not flat. Is that true? Yes. The, when I work in Jupo, I try to give a movement to the to the Jupo before painting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how do you um, 
show that at a at a gallery? I mean, if you're a competition, they usually want things framed. How do you present that? I can only put them in the in the the shows where they let you. In some shows okay. they let you do watercolors that are not with frame. They say, okay, it can be with frame or with no frame. And then you can do installations or you can do with Jupo like this or many things. Those are the the shows that I really like when when they don't tell us what to do or what what size of paper or where, where you can do whatever you want. And what do you do I, I to wish, fasten that wish, to install it? I wish there were more of those competitions or um, of, of those exhibitions. Mm -hmm. But usually, even if it's if it's you, Paul, it's still under glass, wherever you or someone else frames it. Yes, for example, I would show you. I would show you one in Jupo that is that that doesn't have a. This one is it's on Jupo. See this way. See that it is more shiny. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's flat. But but if it goes to a show, it has to be in a frame and under glass. This yes, this 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 one is the this is the the jupo but with a with texture. This is watercolor. Wow. Yes, yeah, we makes a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is, this is a story in watercolor. <laughs> what makes those? What, makes what kind those of very... paper is it? It's it's so. Hard. That that is the the jupo is a synthetic synthetic paper. Ah, okay, thank you. But you can uh, I give shape with a with a. How do you call it? the gun the. A hot gun? No, I don't know how to call it. Heat gun. Heat gun. Heat gun. Heat gun. Heat gun. Heat gun. See, there's ah. this paintings also, the corner of the painting or something. It's very, very creative and interesting. <laughs> I have some comments on Facebook. Kristen Clark is saying, if you run out of roosters, perhaps show us how you do the translucent layers. Not that I'd be remotely disappointed for further roosters. They're great. And then uh, another question also from Yvette asking, how do you make it stay or permanent? Thanks. How do I make it stay what? How do you make it stay? How do you make it permanent? Oh, the one on the Jupo? I have to put a, a varnish after I finish. Okay, now I'm going to use this a, a hotel key. <laughs> you can use a credit card also. The best way to use a credit card. <laughs> I'm not standing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sometimes if I want to be transparent, like the, the transparencies, sometimes I, I paint and then I, I clean it like this. So you, you see what it's under, but, but not the whole thing. Kimberly on Facebook is wondering what that color is that you're using now. Thank you. Uh, no, it's it's all, all the green. colors that I have in the palette. <laughs> it looks like all the green. I cannot, I cannot tell what color it is. And it has it has black and and it has lunar black and quinacridone gold, sailor blue. 
I love your painting. <laughs> That's for Bessie's daughter. Yes, Bessie's daughter. Mina is loving the paintings that you are doing, Sylvia. Me as well. Thank you, Bessie. Oh. This the the sticks. Mm -hmm. Is it the Taylor? This the first one is the Taylor turquoise. Mm -hmm. This one is Taylor blue. What strong colors they have? Yes, I think it's a it's a good option also. Mm -hmm. okay. You could stain the chicken that way. Mm -hmm. Is that you both there or is that hot press? This is a hot press. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Someone was asking about your flat brush, what you used about. Was it the flat or, or no? This, I think the first brush, this, the first, the one that was really kind of. Scrubbing. This this flat I have oh, for many years is from Skoda. Mm -hmm. The scruffy brush, the first one you painted with. This one? No. no, 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 no. With the very first brush you picked with the first rasta. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have a it doesn't no. have a, a brand. Probably uh, my 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 son was married to a girl from China, and probably she gave it to me, but I don't know the brand, and I only know that I really love it. <laughs> I, I know an artist who does that him, himself. He takes a Chinese brush or goat or a horse hair and then cuts it with the scissors like this to make it look like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. the <laughs> ways of getting creative with brushes. See how this has the two colors? It's because I mix them in the in the brush but not in the in the palette. Sylvia, we want to know how you became so brave with uh, your brush strokes. <laughs> <laughs> or should I say braver? <laughs> you how, know, many, I think, how many I think, years have you been doing this, Sylvie? <laughs> I think this is of many years of painting. Right. That you lose the... the that you are not afraid anymore. You're literally not chicken scared like <laughs> don't be a chicken be a rooster and paint <laughs> no but it, you know it, i have thrown a lot of watercolors that i don't like but i really prefer to paint this way where you can be very loose and and enjoy and just not to you if you are afraid the painting will be very tight Either that or you need to be in a class with a friend. I was in a class with Georgia Manshur, who is a very oh, loose painter, too. Yes, yeah, she is, but she's very loose. And I'm really a tight painter. And I was really scared to start. And my friend just goes, just do it. And she hit my arm. And this big sway, the imperial purple went across my paper. So <laughs> I had to start. <laughs> There you Absolutely. go, teachers. Smack your students. <laughs> you know, courage is the courage is the only place on earth still uncrowded. Courage, courage in life, in painting, and in anything. It takes courage to do this, and not mm -hmm. what people will say. Mm -hmm. 
love what Sylvie is doing. And, but, you know, if she paints very fast and this is how you get so brave and so loose. She's been doing it for years. But look at, look at her design, where she goes out of the paper, how she positions it on the, on the paper. It's mm -hmm. not only the color, it's not only the rooster. It's everything that's, that she paints a painting and not a rooster. So the, the way she positions it and all of this. So this is incredible knowledge that she's been collecting for years. And with the roosters, uh, I, I painted one small rooster in one color. And then uh, our owner of a gallery in Costa Rica, he fall, uh, how do you say, fell in love with the rooster. Yes. And he told me, I want you to have an exhibition of roosters, but I want them big, very big. So it was like a paintings of two meters by two meters. Oh, I don't wow. know how much it's in inches. Or one meter by 150. So all the exhibition was about roosters, very big roosters. I had to take all the furniture out of my studio and put them on the floor, paint them. And, and I think after that exhibition is when I started doing a lot of roosters. It's an animal that I really enjoy because you can be very free. And, you did um, one big painting in Spain of roosters on the floor, you remember? Yes, in, in, in Madrid. <laughs> yes. And everybody made, put a straw in it, and it was beautiful. <laughs> uh, it was very nice. I, I really liked that experience because uh, many people was the first time that they painted watercolor, or or sometimes more. But you know, the first time that they painted in 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 such a free way. Sylvia, for those large paintings of uh, dinosaur chickens that you're painting, what brush <laughs> did you use? Yes, you're right. They were like dinosaur chickens. <laughs> what were the brushes that you used for those? I will show you the, one of the brushes that I used for those. And I'm so glad your cameraman is there, too. <laughs> and, and, and what a wonderful husband she, she has. This is one and, of the brush that I use. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it looks like a chicken leg. Turkey leg. <laughs> yeah. See that in my head so you can see the size. That gives new meaning to the term mop brush. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvie, Sylvia, at the beginning we were discussing uh, before the live started, we were discussing about some of the exhibits you did in the 90s and you've been exhibiting and painting uh, since then. Can you speak a little bit to what are the, well, what is the journey and what are the tools you used for growth over so many decades? Mm -hmm. Well, keep I, I, I... <laughs> I was at the beginning, I was studying architecture. I studied for three years, but I got married very young and had children very young. So I had to quit architecture and decided to start painting. But I, at the beginning, I thought it was for a hobby. But I think since the first day, <laughs> I really fell in love with watercolor. And I couldn't do it at the beginning. It was for a hobby, but my one of of the my favorite uh, one of my first uh, times that I saw my paintings, they they were for a hotel, and they asked me they wanted four hundred watercolors. So that was a great practice for me. <laughs> <laughs> A great practice for me, painting watercolor. And, and after that, it, now, every time I see some of those watercolors, I take them out and put some new ones because 
<laughs> it's not me that. anymore. <laughs> we all feel this way. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but but I remember I, I started painting and painting and enjoying and the more I the more I paint the more I enjoy and and now we have a lot of opportunities to to attend or like like this like this live uh, that that we do every Friday where we can see other artist paintings or we can go to festivals um, in internet we can see many artists working and we can learn so much and that's important I think and one of the things that I really like is is to do to do things that I'm not used to do like uh, new subjects, new, new new ways of painting, because that that makes you discover new things. And when you go to these festivals, you see a lot of, of people painting so different than what you do, that that you learn a lot. Like Pesnik, that is very free also. <laughs> I really enjoy when I have seen his demos or or Stella. I the way I like to paint is it's very free. But also I went like for example last year I went to take a, a workshop where with Patricia Guzman that is very realistic. Oh. And and I know that I will never paint like that. But I learned a lot from that workshop because I, I just wanted to do something different and learn new things. I think it's important to be open-minded, to do new things, to, to try, to, to, you know, some of them work, some of them, they don't work, but you learn from all of them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I but, think but that's that's, that's, that's important. Still to, to keep your own and and do it from your heart. And that is these days you see so many people who try to imitate or to to do paint like somebody else. And and that is with you, you have such a wonderful your own style that it's it's you know you can yes, not not notice it. I think yeah. I think it you have like it's good to have our own own style, but it's good to learn and new ways because then you can discover things that you can uh, do it your own way. Oh, always, always you learn from everybody and then you put something new into your painting. They and what do they say? There is a saying thing, saying that. Uh, uh, if you if you steal from one artist is plagiarism. If you steal from hundred is creativity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, learn, it's learn. now it's even more difficult because you can see so many information so many. Yes. everywhere. You know, in the in the internet, in, in, but everywhere. So it's different to to. Not to have influences from many places. Of course, and you should, absolutely. But still keep yourself and your soul in your painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I want. The, I think it's, that's important for each of us to be ourselves in what we do. And, and, but <laughs> that's what I try always. <laughs> and you succeed beautifully, Sylvie. Oh. We have a quick question on Facebook. Uh, Kimberly is asking and saying, love the roosters and learned quite a few tips. Thank you. Curious, do you use paint straight out of the tube? Yes, yes, I like to, and, and I like to, to use it uh, fresh, not like, sometimes I, I have colors in the palette that I use, but I always put new one also because it's a stronger. May we see your palette? Sure. Well, <laughs> now you will see with all the brushes. Equals. 
Be quell. I love that. <laughs> a lot of a lot of pigment in there. Um, and um, there is a question, Sylvie, about uh, what um, kind of a paper you paint the hot press. Is this arches or what? What is it? The hot press paper. Yes, I use I use arches, hot press, and um, and sometimes sometimes cold press. But my favorite is hot press. I like it without texture. Because uh, I really like to draw uh, with the with the brush with the and and it's easier with the hot press that doesn't has that doesn't have texture. Well, what do you find the difference between hot press and upo? Upo is of course plastic. It's uh, hot press could be hundred percent cotton, but but still uh, very slick. But there is difference between upo and hot press. Yes, because the, the yupo stays on the surface of the paper for longer and, and it moves different, completely different, completely different. in the paper. And, <laughs> and one of the things I like about yupo <laughs> is that I can erase. <laughs> I don't do. hmm? if, if I don't the color very quickly. If I don't like something, I just uh, I I will show you. Let me I will show you. Let me bring some water. I will show you. There you are. And it also it takes the, the pigment totally different, much more textural. So, so it's, it's, uh, see, look, look in here what it's doing. Yeah. It doesn't do that in a, on a paper. They are wonderful artists paint, painting exclusively in Yupo, and they do wonderful paintings. So for me, it's very technical. You have to really be know how to to do it because it takes the whole. If you go on the top of it, it takes the layer from under with the brush. But it's it's interesting to to take the because it's it, it works completely different so this one is not the best because maybe it's, it's not clean and so it doesn't work as good as I have to clean it with alcohol. But see all these kind of things, even you can put this with alcohol. Can you see? Yeah. Beautiful structure, see there. And then you can go. Yeah, 
Sylvia, uh, could you name five of your most favorite colors of Daniel Smith? Which one are your favorite? Top five. Four or five? Top five. Uh, de definitely quinacridone gold. Is, I think that's my favorite of all. Then uh, the ultramarine, ultramarine blue. Uh, I like the the green gold. Mm -hmm. uh, I also like the the lunar black. With yeah, that's the, my favorite as well. <laughs> I know all the textures that you can get with that one, even with the the lunar black and the the tiger eye also gets very nice textures. And the other one would be the probably the pyrrole red. Nice, thanks. <laughs> very hard to choose favorite because they are all so, so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, right. I have like 50 favorites, but yes. <laughs> I agree with you, Stella. It's very hard to pick the most Absolutely. It's very hard. When I had to choose my dot card, oh my gosh, it took me days to choose. Yeah, true. <laughs> For me, it was the same. It's so many beautiful colors. I, I love all the quinacridon colors I, I, because of the transparencies they have. Transparent. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorites also. Tell me about that, that giant brush you you showed us, Sylvie. Where did you get that? The the Chinese. The giant, the huge, huge. Ah, in big. China also. In China. In China. <laughs> in oh, Chinatown. Huh? Chinatown has them. Yes. I I remember the China. place we were we were there together, Sylvia. I remember the place. <laughs> oh in yeah, I, I think we were we were together in China when I bought this. That's outrageous. That's really an outrageous brush. You're right, Nick. Is it with jade? Mine is with jade holder. I I bought this wow. uh, uh, last time in Fabriano, but I I haven't learned how to work with this one. Oh, I have the same one, but it doesn't it doesn't absorb the color. I don't use I it very often. You have the same brush. I yes, bought it and I thought, wow, this will be great, but I. No, I no, I don't like it. No? <laughs> I, to say it, I don't like this one. It doesn't absorb uh, at all. Did you try it? It doesn't, but it, it, uh, Miran Kim gave me uh -huh. one, a smaller one. It's very hard, but it's fun. There is whatever you use it for. Yes, it doesn't take a lot of pain, but yeah. <laughs> I, I like to, to, when I travel, to buy new brushes and, and things that, because it's fun, like you said, it's, it's good to try new things. Yeah. We have a few questions on Facebook. The first question is, does Yupo always need varnish? And will you talk about your approach on flowers uh, to flowers on watercolor? The next question is, how do you preserve that? And they're referring to the Yupo painting. And the last question is, is it possible to layer colors on Yupo? Sorry to throw three at you at once. <laughs> okay, yes, you have to put varnish because if you don't put varnish on you put then with a sponge and water, you can clean it. It's like the, those uh, boards that you work with uh, markers. You can clean it very easy if you don't put the uh, erase board. Yes, one more. <coughs> But, but then if you put varnish, why not paint and compress? Then you can, uh, I, have, I have put layers, but you have to be very careful not to clean the, the layer that is, that you put first. You can put maybe some, if you want to put the, some details, you can add some details, but very carefully. I'm sorry, but I didn't understand the question about the flowers. Diane said, will you talk about your approach to flowers on watercolor? 
And we had many other requests about your talking about the transparencies earlier. Thank you. Okay. Well, like I, I like I said, I use sometimes I, I paint and then I clean with with paper. So you can still see some of it, but not all of it, not the not the color, not as strong. And and with the flowers, uh, with the transparencies, it takes longer than the roosters because you have to, to put a layer and then wait. And when it's dry, you can put another layer. And sometimes it takes like five or six layers. So those paintings, what I do is I, I paint and then I go uh, and, and maybe when I come back, I put another layer and then it's like this. That, that's why I didn't do flowers today with the layers because it takes uh, longer and we don't have enough time to do that. Kimia, yeah. do you also use watercolor ground? <coughs> Yes. Last time I showed, but I don't have it here right now. Uh, uh, a watercolor on ceramic, and I used the ground before to do that. And yeah, that's what I, I ask you because I see you do a lot of gorgeous <laughs> glasswork and ceramic. Glasswork. Yeah, I love that clay pot that you painted on with the watercolor ground. Yes, and and it works. The the to work on, to to paint on the ground, it's a little bit uh, different also. The watercolor yeah, art reacts different, but it's very interesting, and, and you can get uh, very nice colors and everything painting on the ground. I I have tried the. The white ground and the transparent ground. I haven't tried the black one or the gold. Uh, Sylvie, do you use masking tape some, sometimes to, to preserve the white or you, you preserve them mostly in the paper? I use, I use masking sometimes, but a few times, not, not very often. No time for <laughs> Yes, because I put the, the, the masking fluid and then I want to start painting and I have to yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, for sometimes it's very interesting also to use the masking fluid. It, it is, yes, yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah, Do you use it, Stella? Use it, but just like you, very seldom. I paint very uh -huh. fast. So I don't have time. So I, and I, I love to preserve the, the white on the paper. I love the white on the paper. <laughs> Sylvie, it has been absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for sharing your wisdom with all of us. And I'm sure everybody enjoyed it very much. And thank you and wish you all the best in, in everything you do because you're just a wonderful person and artist and friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Sylvia. That was thank beautiful. Thank you so much for the invitation so and for being a host today, Stella. And I'm, I'm very happy to see all of you today. And really, thank you so much. And thank you for this life that we can learn so many things from yes. many different artists around the world. In yeah. the Thursday sessions about the colors, and we had today about 200 people watching you, Sylvia. And that's oh my God! <laughs> thank you to thank you to all the people that took the time to to be here today. I'm so glad to to share with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for you your time. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Stella. Thank you. Thank you.